know, it was only a, a matter of time before Rio de Alamo was sent to prison. Her country, Ethiopia, has become one of the most oppressive in the world, with numbers of jailed journalists rising steadily each year. Growing internet censorship and new laws designed to make free expression a punishable offense. During the last two decades, the ruling Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front has adopted increasingly severe methods for halting press coverage deemed critical of the party's actions. International radio frequencies are sporadically blocked for destabilizing propaganda, while outlets like Al Jazeera are accused of indirect support of terrorist groups for reporting on banned Ethiopian political organizations. Seventy-nine Ethiopian journalists have been driven into exile during the past decade, the highest number of any country in the world, according to data from the Committee to Protect Journalists. They leave when their lives are threatened in anonymous, anonymous letters, when their publications are shuttered by the government, or when yet another colleague is beaten and interrogated by the police. But when Alamu did not leave, she did not stop reporting. She moved from one job to another as the publications she worked for were forced to shut down. As a columnist at Fatah, her colleagues say she received threatening phone calls telling her to stop her critical reporting. When she refused, she faced slander in government-controlled media. In the days before she was arrested, Alamu published investigative stories on the government's controversial funding of a dam project. She criticized late Prime Minister Melezenowai's intolerance of dissent, comparing his governance to Gaddafi's. She faced down critics and endured a lot of threats. Ultimately, the government used the 2009 anti-terrorism pro proclamation to jail Elamu for her reporting. And under this law, anyone said to provide moral support to what the government calls terrorist groups, including opposition political parties and some independent media outlets, faces up to 20 years in prison. Alamu is now in her second year of a five-year sentence, branded as a messenger of terrorists. She is being kept at a notoriously ill-maintained prison on the outskirts of Addis Ababa, where rodents infest the cells and where prisoners of conscience share quarters with those convicted of violent crimes. Early in her prison term, Alamu was offered freedom in exchange for an admission of guilt and information about her journalistic colleagues. When she refused, she was put in solitary confinement for two weeks and was denied food and water. This year, she was forced to undergo a painful operation to remove a tumor from her breast. She was given no recovery time and no further treatment before being returned to prison. Her last appeal will be up before the highest court in Ethiopia in just a few days. She has exhausted other judicial options, but plans to maintain her innocence until the very end. When asked to explain her motives for suffering so acutely for her freedom of journalism and expression, Alamu remembers a favorite quote by Schopenhauer. She says, life is short, but truth works far and lives long. Let us speak the truth. And now accepting the 2012 Courage in Journalism Award, on behalf of Riyad Alamu, please welcome Elias Wamdemou.